And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Every time the Most High revealed truth by speaking his words through his people, the workers of iniquity in the form of trolls come to cause confusion. Suddenly, the children of Satan have the answers to the mysteries of life. The synagogue of Satan proclaim that they don't know the origin of the other species of mankind. They say they can't confirm the appearance of the first humans, Adam and Eve. However, in the beast culture, Adam and Eve are depicted to be white. The church depict the Messiah to be white. The workers of iniquity proclaim that the Most High is also white. If whiteness is the foundation, how come the Most High gave black people the superior genes in every land on this earth? Black people did not have to steal nor colonize any land. The Most High scattered the indigenous black people to all the land on this earth. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. The Most High distributed all the land on the earth to Noah's three sons and their descendants. Shem inherited the middle of the earth. Japheth inherited the northern regions of this world. Ham inherited the southern regions of the earth. All three men are indigenous black men. That is how the other species of mankind are finding black people everywhere they go. The other species of mankind believe they are the original people to all the nations. Until this day, they are trying to convince themselves and the indigenous black people that Egypt is white, despite Mizraim being Ham's son. Now that we're going behind the scenes to get to the root, the workers of iniquity are proclaiming that there were other humans before Adam and Eve. They say this to cause confusion. Israelites, the Most High is not the author of confusion. But God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. If Adam and Eve are the first humans, according to the scriptures, and the beast system acknowledged them as the first humans, how can the creatures that lived before Adam and Eve be classified as humans? If there were other species of beings prior to Adam and Eve, they are not human. You have to descend from Adam and Eve to be classified as a human being. The scriptures only acknowledge Satan and his host as the only other inhabitants of this earth. Satan and the fallen angels were here before Adam and Eve joined them in the deep. Many people do not know about the great war in heaven. The Bible briefly gives us an account of the war in the book of Revelations. Satan deceived himself and majority of the angels. The Most High cast Satan and the angels that followed him out of heaven. Satan became darkness and the deep is now his home. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The book of Adam and Eve revealed what took place in the heavens that brought forth the great war in the heavenly realms. The angels revealed to Adam that if the Most High did not cast Satan out of heaven, none of the angels would have remained. But when he fell from among us, there was great joy in heaven because of his going down from us. For had he continued in heaven, nothing, not even one angel would have remained in it. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to this dark earth, for he had become darkness itself and a worker of unrighteousness. 
Satan promised the angels great kingdoms and made countless other promises. Majority of the angels believed him and renounced the Most High and decided to follow Satan. But now, O Adam, we will make known to thee what came upon us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his hosts and deceived them, promising them to give them a great kingdom, a divine nature, and other promises he made them. His hosts believed that his words were true, so they yielded to him and renounced the glory of God. Adam and Eve were not created when Satan deceived himself and the angels. Because of Satan and the fallen angel's transgression, the deep became their home until the end of the world comes and the Most High judge his creation. Prior to Satan and his angels being on earth, the scripture said in the Bible that the deep was without form. The deep was covered in darkness. Satan became darkness. That is how darkness was upon the face of the deep. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. If the deep was without form and nothing was here according to the scriptures, how can the synagogue of Satan proclaim that there were other human beings on earth before Adam and Eve? The Bible clearly said the deep was without form. The scripture said the spirit of the most high move upon the waters. Then the most high began to transform the deep into what we know as the earth. The first thing the most high did was brought light upon the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The Most High created Adam and Eve and their children for the garden. Once Satan deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, that is when they were kicked out of the garden, just like Satan was kicked out of the heavens and came to this earth. Yet if thou hadst submitted and had been obedient to me and have kept my word, thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guests among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. And he has continued, O Adam, to make war against thee until he beguiled thee and made thee come out of the garden to this strange land where all these trials have come to thee and death which God brought upon him, he has also brought to thee, O Adam, because thou did obey him and did transgress against God. Then, when the angels heard these words, they all grieved over him and cursed Satan who had beguiled Adam until he came from the garden to misery, from life to death, from peace to trouble, and from gladness to a strange land. Satan became furious with Adam because he felt that Adam has come to take over his kingdom here on earth. For this reason, he has waged war with Adam and his seed. After this, Satan called to his hosts, all which came to him and said unto him, O our Lord, what wilt thou do? He then said unto them, Ye know that this Adam, whom God created out of the dust, is he who has taken our kingdom. Come. Let us gather together and kill him, or hurl a rock at him and Eve, and crush them under it. Today, the other species of mankind has built great kingdoms. Satan has placed principalities over these nations to rule these kingdoms. That is how Satan's hosts, the fallen angels, obtained the great kingdoms Satan promised them. Remember when Satan tried to deceive Yahshua by offering him all the kingdoms of this world? How can Satan offer Yahshua all the kingdoms of this world if he is not in control of all the superpower nations of today? Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. While the earth first inhabitants 
Satan and his followers are living what they believe to be glorious lives with their stolen riches. They deprive Adam's descendants of land and great kingdoms on earth. It's no coincidence that the indigenous black people have the best continent on earth. They are walking on treasures that they do not value. Precious minerals, diamonds, and gold that the leaders of this world covet. Yet the indigenous black people are not benefiting from these treasures. Satan made sure his hosts and all who follow him profit from this world's treasures. The people of the Most High, the remnant, must remember that you are not of this world. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Yeshua said, My kingdom is not of this world. He proceeds to say if his kingdom was of this world, his people would have fought for him. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Israelites, the deep, what we refer to as earth, is not our home. All of the Most High's creation that followed Satan and was deceived by him live here in the deep. Our true home is the garden of righteousness. Adam and Eve are created beings. They were not born like us. Although we are just like them, before Adam and Eve became flesh, they were unique beings. Remember, the Most High made them in his image and likeness. When Satan came to deceive Adam a second time and Adam forged a covenant with Satan, the verse revealed how Adam was created. The dust of the ground is not the only thing the Most High used to make Adam, but with the four elements. Then Adam held out his hand and put it into Satan's hand. When Satan said unto him, Say now, so true as God is living, rational and speaking, who raised the heavens in the space and established the earth upon the waters and has created me out of the four elements and out of the dust of the earth, I would not break my promise nor renounce my word. When Adam and Eve transgressed the laws of the garden, the Most High stripped them of their bright nature. The book of Adam and Eve said the Most High had mercy on them. Instead of killing them, the Most High gave them a body that can tolerate the elements on earth. But when I heard of thy transgression, I deprived thee of that bright light. Yet of my mercy, I did not turn thee into darkness, but I made thee thy body of flesh over which I spread this skin in order that it may bear cold and heat. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh that was altered, he wept bitterly, he and Eve, over what they had done, and they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. The Most High gave them flesh and melanin. Melanin protect the indigenous black people from the sun harsh UV and from many other things. The animals have melanin, the plants have melanin, the other species of mankind have a strange form of melanin. The melanin they have is not like ours. I'm not sure why the indigenous black people believe we are all the same. Before Adam and Eve sinned, they had a body like the angels. The Most High referred to Adam as an angel. And Adam said, after he was raised, O God, while we were in the garden, we did not require or care for this water. But since we came to this land, we cannot do without it. Then God said to Adam, while thou was under my command and was a bright angel, Thou knewest not this water. The book of Enoch said in chapter 69 that man was created like the angels. For men were created exactly like the angels, to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous, and death, which destroys everything, could not have taken hold of them. But through this their knowledge they are perishing, and through this power it is consuming me. Adam and Eve before the fall were angelic beings. The difference between Adam and Eve and the holy angels, they were made in the image and likeness of the Most High. The Most High has a purpose for the angels, as well as a hierarchy system for the angels. Some angels are made to watch over the Most High's creation. These angels are known as the watchers. There are angels over the weather. Some angels are messengers for the Most High. 
There are angels who guard the remnant. The Most High made the man and the woman, Adam and Eve, to create more children of righteousness. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Because Adam and Eve was also deceived like the angels, they were immediately removed from the garden. They were not permitted to enter the garden until the judgment against them are fulfilled. Therefore, Adam and Eve were unable to have children in the garden. Their children was born in the earth, the deep. The Most High, Adam and Eve often called the earth strange land. If the garden the Most High created for Adam, Eve, and their children was on earth, when the Most High sent them out of the garden, they wouldn't call the earth strange land. And when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden and saw the broad earth spread before them, covered with stones, large and small, and with sand, they feared and trembled and fell on their faces from the fear that came upon them, and they were as dead. Because whereas they had hitherto been in the garden land, beautifully planted with all manners of trees, they now saw themselves in a strange land, which they knew not and had never seen. The Bible said, when the Most High transformed the deep into what we know today as the earth, he created Adam and Eve last. He created them on the sixth day. The scripture said the Most High rested from his work on the seventh day. When the Most High created Adam, the word of the Most High said he put Adam in the garden. While Adam was in the garden, the Most High made Eve in the garden as well. The Bible did not say the Most High put the man, Adam, in the earth to take care of it. The Most High said to Adam to take care of the garden. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. After Adam and Eve sinned, they left the garden and came to earth. Many of us are led to believe the garden and the earth are in the same location. You will soon learn that is false. If the garden of Eden is in this world, when Adam and Eve left the garden, they would not refer to the earth as strange land. Remember, Satan and his host was already here when Adam and Eve was banished to the earth. The deep is not the first home for Adam and Eve, nor is the earth the place the people of the Most High would spend eternity. But Adam and Eve wept for having come out of the garden, their first abode. According to the scriptures, the earth is Adam and Eve's second place of residency. The deep is the place the Most High placed the seed of Adam to carry out the judgment that was decreed against Adam and Eve as well as the place all the followers of Satan dwell. Once the judgment against Adam and Eve are fulfilled, the garden is where the righteous seed of Adam will dwell. The deep was never the place the Most High created for his children to dwell. As I stated before, the Most High created his children to live in the garden. The garden and the earth are not the same. Then Adam said unto God, O Lord, thou didst create us, and make us fit to be in the garden. And before I transgress, thou madest all beasts come to me, that I should name them. Israelites, it is important to know that the Most High placed Adam and Eve in the garden when he created them. The workers of iniquity who assist Satan in changing history and altering the scriptures has misled many to believe the Garden of Eden is in the Middle East. Most historians and scholars say modern Iraq is where the Garden of Eden is located. If the Garden was in the Middle East, how come we can't find it, nor see the angels that dwell there currently? Some people say the flood destroyed the Garden. There's no supporting scriptures that said the Garden was destroyed. There are many scriptures that state the Garden still exists. About 300 holy angels of the Most High dwell there and taking care of the garden. O oh Adam, look at that garden of joy and at this earth of toil, and behold the angels who are in the garden that is full of them, and see thyself alone on this earth with Satan whom thou didst obey. Yet if thou hadst submitted 
and have been obedient to me and have kept my word thou wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guests among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. Then God had pity on them and showed them mercy and sent his angel to keep the garden. And there are 300 angels, very bright, who keep the garden and with incessant sweet singing and never silent voices serve the Lord throughout all days and hours. The scripture said that the most high place a sheriff with fiery sword guarding the garden to prevent Adam and Eve from entering the garden when they were kicked out of the garden. Until this day, the angels of the most high are tending the garden and the cherub are still guarding the garden. Additionally, Yeshua said in his father's house, there are many mentions. He will go to prepare a place for the righteous. That place is in the garden of Eden. And the cherub who guarded the garden was standing at the western gate and guarding it against Adam and Eve, lest they should suddenly come into the garden. And the cherub turned around as if to put them to death, according to the commandment God had given him. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The book of Revelation revealed that after judgment, the righteous will inherit eternity. By now, we all should know eternity for us is in the garden. The scripture said the Most High will create a new earth and a new heaven. The scripture said the new city will come down to us from the Most High. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. If the deep was where the garden was located, there wouldn't be a need for it to come down to us. The garden was not destroyed when the flood came. Enoch, whom the Most High took to the heavens, seen the garden and the tree of life. Enoch also said there were great mountains surrounding the earth. Enoch described the other realms like mountains. Read chapter 32 in the first book of Enoch to learn more about the great mountains and valleys Enoch saw in the heavens. The children of Seth dwell on the holy mountain that was close to the Garden of Eden. The second book of Enoch revealed that the Garden of Eden is located in the third heaven. And those men took me thence and led me up unto the third heaven and placed me there. And I looked downwards and sensed the produce of these places, such as has never been known for goodness. And I saw all the sweet flowering trees and beheld their fruits, which were sweet smelling and all the foods borne by them, bubbling with fragrant exhalation. And in the midst of the trees that of life and that place whereon the Lord rests, when he goes up into paradise, and this tree is of ineffable goodness and fragrance and adorned more than every existing thing. And on all sides, it is in form gold-looking and vermilion and fire-like and covers all. And it has produced from all fruits. Its roots is in the garden at the earth's end. And paradise is between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And two springs come out which send forth honey and milk. And their springs send forth oil and wine. And they separate into four parts and go round with quiet course and go down into the paradise of Eden between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And thence they go forth along the earth and have a revolution to their circle, even as other elements. And here there is no unfruitful tree and every place is blessed. With the book of Enoch revealing the garden is located in the third heavens, this information will correspond with the scriptures written in the book of Adam and Eve, as well as the Bible. The Most High said to Adam and Eve that there are no other place with land but the earth when Adam and Eve asked the Most High to send them to another land for rest. The Most High said to them they can only find rest in the heavens. The garden is the resting place for the righteous. 
Because the Most High judged Adam and Eve, they cannot enter the garden until the judgment against them are fulfilled. Therefore, the Most High couldn't send them to the garden to rest. The Most High said to Adam, if he could bring him back into the garden, he would have. O Adam, as to what thou sayest, bring me into a land where there is rest. It is not another land than this, but it is the kingdom of heaven where alone there is rest. But thou cannot make thy entrance into it at present, but only after thy judgment is passed and fulfilled. Then will I make thee go up into the kingdom of heaven, thee and thy righteous seed, and I will give thee and them the rest thou ask for at present. But I cannot alter the covenant that has gone out of my mouth, else would I have brought thee back into the garden. The word of the Most High will not return to him void. It must fulfill what he sent it to do. The Most High said he cannot alter the covenant of the five day and a half he made with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve can't go anywhere but the earth to find rest. This confirmed Enoch's vision of the garden being in the third heavens. The earth and the garden are in two different locations. The garden and the earth are not too far apart from each other. When the children of Seth live on the holy mountain, the scripture said the garden wasn't too far from them. The scriptures went on to say how far the garden was from the holy mountain, 15 spiritual cubits. The scriptures went on to say that one spiritual cubit is three cubits of men. Altogether, the garden was 45 cubits away from the holy mountain. For Seth and his children, by reason of their own purity, heard and saw those angels. Then again, the garden was not far above them, but only some 15 spiritual cubits. Now one spiritual cubit answers to three cubits of men, altogether 45 cubits. Seth and his children dwell on the mountain below the garden. They sow not, neither did they reap. They wrought not food for the body, not even wheat but only offering. They ate of the fruit of the trees, well flavored, that grew on the mountain where they dwell. The scripture said the garden was located above where Adam and Eve and their children live on the holy mountain. The garden is not located in the physical realm, but in the heavenly realm in the third heaven. The synagogue of Satan know the garden of righteousness is located in the heavenly realm. Satan used to live there before he deceived himself and transgressed. Israelites, another reason Satan is angry against Adam and his seed. The Garden of Eden was his home when he was a bright angel. When he sinned, the Most High created Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden. The more the Most High revealed his truth through his words, the clearer the enmity between the serpent seed and the woman seed becomes. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Beside the Most High giving Adam... Satan's former home, the garden. The Most High granted Adam salvation and not Satan. I hope you are beginning to understand the hatred. The workers of iniquity predict the garden was located in modern day Iraq. Whenever the synagogue of Satan wants to hide truth that will flip their world upside down, the origin to many biblical landmarks are concealed. Although they proclaim to be intelligent and have great wisdom, when it comes to the affairs of the Most High, it is unknown to them. They suddenly have amnesia when they don't want you to know the truth. They know the truth will make you free. The kingdom of darkness don't want you to become free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
In addition to the synagogue of Satan withholding the true location of the garden, the synagogue of Satan do not want the descendants of Adam to know their true nature. They don't want you to know how unique you truly are. That is why they work overtime to damn your light. We possess powers and authority given to us that we have not tapped into. If the indigenous people know the truth, it will expose the lies they have been telling for multiple generations. The indigenous black people can begin to call on the most high to save them instead of calling on demons and idols for help. The scriptures did say the fallen angels taught men to worship demons for God. Also, the scripture said that the heathens make their sacrifice to devils and not to the most high. And Uriel said to me, here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. When the people of the Most High begin to know the truth, they will become knowledgeable about the demonic entities they live among. Israelites, the reason we can no longer see the garden and the angels that are tending the garden, when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost the bright nature that gave them the ability to see spiritual things. When they obtain a body of flesh, the flesh restrict them from seeing into the spiritual. And Adam said to Eve, look at thine eyes and at mine, which before beheld angels in heaven praising, and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become of flesh. They cannot see in like manner as they saw before. Once the children of Seth joined the children of Cain in their abomination during the time of Jared, Lamech, Methuselah, and Noah were the only ones that remained on the holy mountain and not joined Cain's children in their abominations. The Most High revealed to Adam and to all the leaders of Adam's seed about the flood and what will happen after the flood. Because of the transgression of the children of Seth, the Most High would not allow them to stay on the holy mountain and the Most High said they would no longer be able to see the garden. Then he called Enoch his eldest son and Methuselah Enoch's son and Lamech the son of Methuselah and Noah the son of Lamech. And when they were come to him, he prayed over them and blessed them and said to them, Ye are righteous, innocent sons. Go ye not down from this holy mountain, for behold, your children and your children's children have gone down from this holy mountain and have estranged themselves from this holy mountain through their abominable lust and transgression of God's commandment. But I know through the power of God that he will not leave you on this holy mountain because your children have transgressed his commandment and that of our fathers, which we had received from them. But, O oh, my sons, God will take you to a strange land, and ye never shall again return to behold with your eyes this garden and this holy mountain. Altogether, not one of our fathers or of their children remain on that holy mountain, except those three, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. For all the rest went down from the mountain and fell into sin with the children of Cain. Therefore were they forbidden that mountain, and none remain on it but those three men. Israelites, that is why we are unable to see the garden today. It is not because the Most High did not reveal its location, but because of the downfall of the children of Seth, the Most High concealed the garden from his people. The garden is in the heavenly realm. That is why Adam and Eve had a spiritual body that was fit for the garden when they were created. After their downfall, they obtain a body of flesh suitable for the deep, as known as the earth. The deep is a temporary home until salvation comes for the righteous. The Most High said, in the last days, knowledge would increase. Israelites, the Most High is revealing the truth about Adam and Eve. Stay tuned. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, 
The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. But the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write. For these words are true and faithful.